and his five pegs. And uh, a very uncopyable band that was, of course. And I couldn't think of better people to uh, go into the jaws of death. <laughs> Andy Shum there. And there's Jimmy Dorsey, uh, Pee Wee Russell and Bud Livingston all, all together. Michael McQuaid. Uh, at the trombone, we uh, playing the music of Miff Mole, Alistair Allen. Um, playing Eddie Lang, I think, mainly, isn't it? Eddie, Eddie Lang, Martin Wheatley there. And Adrian Rolini will be, I, I've forgotten your name. <laughs> yeah, Franz Juster. <laughs> And at the Grand Jazz Percussion Kit, uh, playing the style of uh, Victor Burton. I had one of his suits, you know. <laughs> uh, what was different about, tell the audience, but don't tell them too long. What was different about Victor Burton? Play timpani. There we are. So, so where are they? Uh, anyway, you'll hear the sound. Red Nichols and his five pen. Twenty-one years old, you see. So uh, uh, a great prodigy there. Uh, and uh, Andy, 
You're only 22, aren't you? Oh, I wish. Yeah. <laughs> so, you know, the replica's five pennies with, with the timpani. Could you give us a, a little taste of your timpani, please? That's, that's the BBC uh, in Germany, isn't it? I recognise that. <laughs> so, the, the first track they, they did was uh, a Red Nickels original, and it's called That's No Bargain. I want two, I want All these guys were the same age, weren't they, Andy? Roughly. Yeah. Yeah, kids. <laughs> there was a man called Frank Livingstone. Now, Frank Livingstone was uh, extremely talented. He played uh, all the saxophones and clarinet, but he had very modern ideas in arranging. And uh, here's a number that uh, had Red Nichols played. Uh, played it in a ballroom, uh, he would have got the sack. <laughs> because, um, you know, ballrooms wanted regular dance music, you see. And this was very, very forward thinking. And uh, so we're going to play it to you now. So uh, it's called Imagination. Imagination, originally recorded by the Charleston Chasers. Of course, Red Nichols worked under many pseudonyms. Uh, the Louisiana Rhythm Kings, you know, Charleston Chasers, etc. Charleston Chasers, Imagination. <laughs>
tighter mo what is it? modernity. Maternity. <laughs> they done a, we have a very well, a lot of these guys are fine arrangers on the stage uh, this afternoon. Andy Chum writes lovely charts. And this next one has been written by Mr. Michael McQuaid. Do take a bow in advance of the And you have the privilege of announcing the tune and, and telling us all about it. I have no microphone to do so, though. Oh. That's all right. Uh, we're going to play Alice Blue Gown, as recorded by Red Nichols. And um, you may be interested to know we're going to play the recorded solos. Uh, Andy's going to play the recorded trumpet solo, or the solo from Red. I'm going to play Jimmy Dorsey's alto sax solo, but from different takes. So, so don't panic if you don't recognise it. <laughs> I know we are. We're missing the lead trombone part. Now we'll just show you how good these guys are. <laughs> Sweet as apple cider. And this features 
the grand old man of the I'll, I'll forget that that has happened. <laughs> but when I go to sit down, I'm going to be in real trouble. You're only inches, you know, I'm inches from death here. You know? <laughs> the grand old man of Swedish jazz, of South Sweden. He's, he's known in South Sweden. You're totally unknown in the north of the country. <laughs> yes. Ladies and gentlemen, Franz Jostrom. And would you just tell us about uh, what uh, 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 an instrument I lovingly call the beast? It's yes. a bass saxophone or a bass saxophone. Some, some people say bass, other people say bass saxophone. You have to decide. It was common during the 20s, but uh, went away when swing started because it was thought to be too cumbersome. If you read the Annals of Jazz, you will always see it named as a completely uh, impossible instrument to play, not to talk about That's quite it. evident, actually. That's <laughs> evident. <laughs> <laughs> and cruel, isn't it? And a terrible thing. That's why band leaders are so unpopular. <laughs> okay, you're featured heavily on this. So you can give us the tempo. I just sweet as apple sauce. <laughs>
What do you think of playing his music, Alistair? It's jolly nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's not easy. So, uh, you're going to do a Myth Mold Tour de Force now. Can you stand up for it? I think I'll probably have to. Yes, you will. <laughs> it's called <laughs> Slipping Around. Okay. Uh, a very facile, agile trombone. <laughs> <laughs> One, two,
slight uh, uh, change around on the stage, you see. For the next few slides. <laughs> So we've got, we're playing a very special arrangement for which uh, uh, Red Nichols augmented the five pennies with an extra two trumpets. So you had a, a three trumpet section and the tune uh, was written by the pianist uh, of the original Dixieland jazz band, J. Russell Robinson, and it's called uh, Eccentric. And uh, most bands can't play this arrangement because they don't have the three trumpet players, but we're we're very lucky today to have, to have an abundance, an absolute abundance of uh, trumpet players. Uh, when, I could, when I come down before the session, they were beavering away. No. <laughs> Now this better be worth it, they do it's simple.
it was hardly worth coming, wasn't it, Jim? <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Thank you. Well, many of you, many of you may know uh, the famous uh, uh, Red Nichols researcher, Stan Hester. And um, he passed away this following week. He's from America. And uh, without him, we wouldn't have half the information we have about Red. Uh, he's invaluable, and uh, we miss him very dearly. So this last number we're going to play is uh, dedicated to him. It's one called Feeling No Pain. <clears throat> This is what we call, in musical parlance, tear-offs. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you.